Well, fancy that this subject has come up again, I say in her absence. Here's a news item that you might be interested in, Uncle. I tap on my phone screen until Horatio's image appears. You remember I mentioned Horatio? I hold the screen in front of his face. A title on the bottom of the screen reads, Halloween Trick, NIST Scandal. Oh, don't look so sour, my good uncle. It's a comedy, a prank, a, a bit of tomfoolery, all in good jest. Just remember, we're laughing at you, not with you. Claudius reaches for my phone and I hold it behind my back. Claudius's mouth makes a thin straight line. Polonius is still trying to warm himself by huddling around his tea. Well, shall we? I press play. Gertrude comes back with a box of tissue and sits down. What's this? She asks, smiling. One of those alternative internet shows, Claudius says. I prop my phone up on a rolled napkin so that they can lean their three heads together to see the little screen. I watch their faces as they listen to Horatio explain that he managed to get a parody report published in a reputable engineering journal using fake calculations and bad data to support a false argument. I, I got it past the editor and peer reviewers. Horatio explains. No one has noticed, just as no one noticed how idiotic the NIST report is. Claudius waxes purple. Now comes the good part, I say. Gertrude glances at me angrily. Horatio interviews well, don't you think? I say cheerfully, handsome guy. I use the name of a NIST contributor. Horatio goes on. It was his credentials that got the paper through. The problem today is that authority is convincing even when the scientific method is completely disregarded. I wonder whose name it was he used? Claudius, can you guess? I ask. Claudius leaves the room in a huff and we hear him fumbling for a light in his office, knocking over his modern floor lamp. Why doesn't the light work in here? He screams. I taunt Claudius, calling out to him. How much mass fell over the side, uncle? How much of the load was subtracted? Make any estimates, gather any data on that? How much mass was left to fall on the cold part of the buildings? What was the amount of added kinetic energy? Got any numbers? I heard that scientists like to measure things and write out equations. Hamlet, this isn't the way to- Gertrude breaks off. Polonius looks at the ceiling, as if trying to disappear, and slurps his tea. Wait, mother, this is what Claudius and friends say to explain the collapse. I grab my phone, locate the text, and read. The potential energy released by the downward movement of the large building mass far exceeded the capacity of the intact structure below to absorb that through energy of deformation. Then I shout down the hall. Ring a bell, Claudius? Turning back to my mother, I say, that is the $20 million answer. That's it, mother. That's all they wrote about, the collapse of the intact structure that killed your husband. They spent the entire report investigating questions no one needed answers to, like how Claudius Bolt does after 40 days and 40 nights of fire. Hamlet, pleads Gertrude. I'm serious, mother, he's a fraud. I'm not, I'm not going to put up with this, says Claudius coming back into the room. How much potential energy? How much mass? What was the capacity of the intact structure? Numbers, uncle. Give me numbers. Turning to Gertrude, he complains. He spends a couple of hours on the internet and he's a physicist? Maybe you could just answer his questions, dear, so that we can all move on? Gertrude pleads. Claudius sits back at the table and goes back to eating. Gertrude and Polonius look at him in wonder for a moment, and then they, too, take up their dessert forks. I'm sorry, Polonius, Gertrude. This must be very difficult for you, says Polonius. Has Hamlet ever been to see a psychiatrist? 